in the missile. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. May we take a moment to welcome one another. We pause again to entrust ourselves to God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you summon us to take up the cross and follow you. Lord, have mercy. Your cross is an everlasting sign of your love. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you will come again in glory to bring salvation to all who embrace your cross. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in each of us what is good, and by your watchful care, you may keep us safe what you have nurtured. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. I'll be singing number 61 in the gather book. <clears throat> 61. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, 
to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. For whoever wishes to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world, yet forfeit your life? Or what can one give in exchange for your life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and he will repay all according to their conduct. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening. This is very random. Every now and then, if something happens to me and it's a first, I kind of share it with you. Two of my nieces, one is 11, one is 13, they're, they're really close. When they're together, they are hilarious, can I tell you? They fill the room with energy and laughter. We all went to dinner last night, and they call me all kinds of things. They'll call me Uncle Trey. They'll call me, hello, Father. They say, hello, Uncle Father, Uncle, you know, I'm like, you're confusing me, they tell me. So last night I get there, and they come running up, and they're laughing. I've never been called this before. And they're all excited. They're just so, they're just so wound up. It's a three-day weekend. They were going to the beach today. We all were going out to dinner last night. I go, hey, ladies, and they stop, and they go, this is what they say to me. Oh, most honorable father. <laughs> I said, that's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, well, we got to get serious. 
I'm asking you right now to think about the last time in your life that life did not go like you thought it would go. You might be in the middle of that right now. Could have been something little, like maybe you had to wait in traffic or your mom or dad told you no or whatever. Could have been something big. Maybe you didn't see it coming and maybe it just totally blindsided you. For the next couple of minutes, the last time, the next time, life doesn't go like we want it to go and how we respond. We have to get one thing clear first before we, go, before we go any further. This is a very strange sounding gospel, at least at one part. The interchange between Jesus and Peter. James set us up for this last week in his homily when Peter was on top of the world and he alluded to the fact that this week Peter would be a total, in a totally different place because he finds out that things are not going to go like he wanted them to go. And so what does Jesus say to him? Well, you heard what he said. Let's be clear. Jesus was not calling Peter Satan. He was not referring to him as Satan. He was not comparing him to Satan. All Jesus do was doing was stating the fact, and everybody in here knows this, that all of us at times will be tempted to avoid the crosses in our life. wish they weren't going on, pretend they weren't there, whatever you... The little thing you don't know about me probably is most of my life, a lot of times, when something's going on that either intimidates me, scares me, or it's almost unthinkable, my first reaction is always to do that for a moment. Now, a lot of this is normal. Staying stuck in that is bad. Thinking as God does, thinking as humans do. But a lot of times, that's what I do. I kind of do like this. And then I hope that when I look back, well, maybe it's gone. Well, of course, that's not the way you do it. That's not how you get through. You'll hear me say this more than once today. Whenever life doesn't go like we plan, for the person of faith, which to one degree or another we all are, we have two basic choices. The best example of this for me was a very emotional one that I've shared with you before, but all week it comes to mind again in light of this gospel. The best example for me was Father Mike. When Father Mike found out how sick he really was, it was last December. I was out in Southern California four days doing a little backpacking, and on the last night, we stay at a hotel. I'm out in the parking lot getting my stuff, the phone rings, and then they begin to tell me how sick he really is. You need to come home. Why? Not just because of that, but because the place where he was in the moment he did not want to do what he needed to do to get through it. His doctors were telling him what he needed to do, but he was tired. We all know this. So I came home and we visited, and it, that's exactly where he was. He had those moments of, God forbid this never happens, like Peter. He said, I'm too tired to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't think I can do this. And guess what? He came around and he did it. And he picked up that cross and he carried it. A big part of faith is being able to take the next step down the road, even though you have no idea where the road's going to go. And that's what he did. And in a big way, that's what this is all about for you and me. Now, if we want, we can think about the little things in life, the lesser moments when things don't go like we think or hope or expect them to go, like this morning, just at random. I saw the replay of the last play of the Catholic High Parkview Baptist football game last night. Some of you might have been there or you saw the news. Catholic High won on the very last play of the game. Pass. Touchdown. Game over. We win. And everybody, at least in the video I saw, went crazy. And I'm sure they woke up this morning feeling pretty good. And hopefully they woke up this morning being very thankful. But you got to wonder, 
What if it had gone the other way? We can focus on the lesser things, the things that in the long run don't really matter a whole lot. Nobody likes waiting in traffic. Nobody likes when their internet goes down. We don't like to be told no a lot of times. We can focus on all that stuff that's lesser, trivial, whatever. But this is supposed to be about the big stuff. The ground moving things that happen to you and to me and the people we love. And even though we all know this, this is what we're told again today. We're faced with two choices, one or the other. I have to tell you this. I still laugh. This is hilarious. My brother and I, we still laugh about this. When I found out I had cancer 14 years ago, my brother and his wife were with me. I never told you this story. And in the moment when I found out, we were in this room with the doctor, and I was still under the influence or the effects of what they call the medicine. Now, if you've ever gone in for procedure, and I'm not going to name the kinds we go in for, because you know what I'm talking about, they kind of put you asleep. Not, they say you're not fully asleep, but you're basically out of it, right? So we're in there, and I'm kind of like this. I'm feeling great, you know? And the doctor's talking to my brother, and then he tells him what it is, that it's pretty serious. And I'm hearing him, but it, it makes no sense to me. So the doctor leaves for a moment, and my brother is there with his wife. And this is how my brother says the conversation went. He says, um, so, man, what do you think? And he said, my answer was, oh, it's all good, man, no big deal. He goes, you have cancer. He wasn't being funny, he goes, you have cancer. That's what the doctor just said. I'm like, oh, it's all good, man. Where are we going for lunch? <laughs> so when I came out of it, of course, it was anything but all good, and I knew that I was going to be faced with a choice. Getting ready for today, I read an article, and in the article, this guy writes, I thought this was perfect. Jesus trusted the Father. Peter did not. It's as if Peter wanted to take the ink pen out of God's hand and write an ending that he was comfortable with. That's perfect. And Jesus' answer to him was, you're not thinking as God thinks, you're thinking as human beings do. It's okay, it's fine, it's normal to want to take the ink pen out of God's hand and write an ending that we're okay with. But we got to get through that. We gotta trust enough to let God write the story, even though we don't know the ending. And trust enough to know that whenever we face a cross, whenever things don't go like we plan, it's not just an obstacle, it's an opportunity. It's not just a burden, it can be a blessing. pray together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, and the Lord, and the Lord, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from the God, life and life, true God and true God, begotten and made, non-substantial.
God's message of love is burning within our hearts. And so we pray for all the world and for all those who are in need. For all Christians whose lives are in danger because of the gospel message that they live and share, we pray to the Lord. For our national leaders, that they learn humility and graciousness in dealing with others, especially those who are disabled and different, we pray to the Lord. For our faith community, as we seek to discern the will of God and live it out in our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. May God hold in his heart those who have suffered great loss of life and property during Hurricane Harvey, that refugees from the storm may find support and comfort from their neighbors, strangers, and all people of goodwill. We pray to the Lord. That all who have died, especially Barrett Benton, may spend eternity in the healing presence of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. And for the other intentions that we now offer in silence. O oh God, our Father, grant us the wisdom to know your will and the strength to go where you follow. This weekend especially, we pray that you give blessing and dignity to all in their work, whatever work they do. We ask this in all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll be singing number 500 in the Missal. 500 in the missile. to 
Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty and loving Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, O God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. His death we celebrate with love. His resurrection we profess with a living faith and his coming again in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with the angels and the saints and the whole company of heaven, we praise you and we glorify your name as we sing. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may one day merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
be singing number 839 in the gather book. 839. Sing number 500 and gather. 500.
Let us pray. Renewed by the bread from this heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have a good evening and a good weekend. Uh, if I could offer two quick reminders. The first is every week, every weekend, uh, Mass is recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. I encourage you to, to go to the St. Jude YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, this Mass today will be the Mass for this weekend that we'll post. It'll post later this evening, but it will be there. Uh, secondly, as you probably know, we will invite a second collection next weekend to assist with victims of the hurricane and flooding. When we were given the packet for that, the packet told us to ask those offering a check to make it out to this long hurricane fund name. That's what you're going to see in the bulletin. But it actually needs to be made out to St. Jude. I know that's maybe difficult to remember because there's a lot going on. Uh, but just know that if you want to do that, you can do it next weekend after communion or any time before or after that. The funds will be collected here and then sent on to the diocese and then dispersed where they need to go. The Lord be with you. We ask God to bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Please join in singing Missile number 628. <coughs> 628. 